All right, and welcome to this flipped lesson. Um, this is number two of the flipped lesson series. And today we're going to talk about historical interpretation. We're also going to talk about point of view in history, as well as bias in history. Uh, parents and students, uh, make sure to check Skyward for the latest messages for this week. Uh, there'll be a message posted this afternoon that will have a kind of a rundown of everything we'll be covering this week, including some hyperlinks to the flipped lessons. Um, tonight's flipped lesson uh, will need to be watched by Wednesday the 20th of uh, August and um, tomorrow night's flipped lesson will need to be watched by Thursday the 21st. Alright, sliding on in to the lesson. Alright, what do you think historical interpretation means? So at this point in the video, if you want to take a second um, and write down on a piece of paper and have it ready for class on Wednesday, your own thoughts. Just take a moment and write down what you think interpretation means, but more importantly, what does it mean for a, something to be a historical interpretation? All right, according to your textbook, in historical interpretation is an explanation of the meaning of something. So if we're studying Columbus, for example, we can use this map over here to talk about a historical interpretation. To Christopher Columbus, he believed that if he sailed westward, that he would eventually find a route to Asia, and primarily um, India. Well, when Columbus landed, he landed in what is now present day, um, Dominican Republic and, and Haiti. Well, Columbus thought that he had landed in India, so therefore he named the uh, tribe that he encountered, the Arawaks, Indians, and the name kind of stuck. Now today we know uh, the Arawaks and other tribes as Native Americans because they were native to this region, North America or South America, or the Central Americas. So the idea of Indians comes from a mistake because Columbus thought he was in another part of the world. So here, for example, when Columbus landed, he believed he landed in the Far East in India, but he'd actually landed in present-day Dominican Republic. However, Columbus was convinced, so he named the Arawak Native Americans, Indians, and for many centuries the name stuck. You can see at the map uh, below, you have several Native American tribes throughout the uh, what is now the continental United States, and um, those tribes uh, have been referred to as Indian tribes for a long time. Uh, the appropriate term is Native Americans. Okay. Um, so history can be influenced by historical interpretation. And a great example of that is on page 15 of your textbook. So if, if you want to access the textbook at home, uh, remember there's some instructions on Skyward on how you do that. And it will be on page 15 of the McGraw-Hill textbook. You can also use the Discovery Ed tech book as a great resource to do a little research on Mr. Genghis Khan. Um, some resources and some historians would tell you that Genghis Khan, when he was the ruler of Mongolia, uh, that there was a time of peace and prosperity and lots of stability, that the people of Mongolia enjoyed religious tolerance, higher learning, and consistent laws. However, most often in history, Genghis Khan is seen as a bloodthirsty, fierce warrior and a military leader who basically took no prisoners. So we have these two different accounts of Genghis Khan. We can lead that to historical interpretation. Who is the real Genghis Khan? And what evidence is more credible? Meaning it's better evidence to prove one way or the other what Genghis Khan was like. Here's some questions for you to think about. What is historical point of view? How can it be wrong? Well, according to your text, historical point of view is a general attitude about people or their lives throughout history. Evidence of historical point of view can be seen in the Mayan calendar and the date of December 21st, 2012, which was known uh, by some to be 
what the Mayans predicted to be the end of the world. Let's talk about that a little bit. Most archaeologists and historians point to the, the end of the Mayan calendar for the date of December 21st, 2012 to actually be aligned with a solar system occurrence that only happens so often. That the Mayans were so skilled in science and mathematics that they knew exactly when the planets would align. Now, to the Mayans, this wasn't necessarily the end of the earth or end of the world, but rather this was the dawning of a new age in the Mayan calendar. Well, so far, archaeologists up to uh, 2010 had only found calendars up to this point in time, December 21st, 2012, which led to a lot of doomsday predictions. Obviously, since it's uh, past that date, the Earth did not end on December 21st, 2012. But the point of view comes from the historians. For some historians, they helped kind of fuel the end of the world hysteria. Well, the Mayan calendar ends and other civilizations have the same ending date. Something's going to happen. Well, when nothing happened, historians were able to go back and say, this point of view of history from the Mayans was just the end of this particular calendar. And the last part we'll talk about is bias in history. It's an unreasoned emotional judgment about people and events. Take a moment just to see if you can think of an example of how history could be biased. All right, as we wrap things up for Wednesday, you may want to pause on this screen. And this would be some, these, these would be some good questions to take down as you prepare yourself for our discussions on Wednesday. Also, please remember there's a 90% chance of a quiz on Friday. Uh, historical interpretation, historical bias, and historical point of view can all be great questions for that quiz. So just take a, th take a second. What is historical interpretation? And can you think of an example of how history can be interpreted differently? How does point of view affect history? See if you can find an example in your online text or the Discovery Ed tech book and bring it with you to class on Wednesday. And can you find evidence of bias in history? See if you can find a specific example. All right, everybody have a great evening, and uh, you'll need to have watch this video by Wednesday, August the 20th.